Hey guys, in today's video, we'll be taking a look at inflation versus deflation explained. We have seen a lot of talks about inflation and on one camp, we have people who believe that inflation is likely to charge ahead and remain at the high end moving forward. And in the other camp, there are people who believe that deflationary forces are likely to be stronger moving forward and thus inflation is likely to remain in the low end. But to really understand the arguments on both sides, we need to have an understanding of what is inflation and what is deflation and what causes inflation and deflation. And that is what we are going to take a look at in this video. First, we'll take a look at what is inflation. So inflation measures how much more expensive a set of goods and services has become over a certain period, usually a year. With inflation, the purchasing power of our currency decreases over time, which means that the same dollar in the future can buy us less goods and services. So the general consensus is that too much inflation is not good for us, but a small amount of inflation is actually good for the economy. Because the thinking goes that with small amounts of inflation, consumers are encouraged to consume more goods and services today rather than postpone it to the future. However, I do not agree with this thinking, but there is a topic for another day. So yeah, inflation basically measures how much more expensive a set of goods and services has become over a certain period of time. For deflation, deflation is the fall in the overall level of prices in an economy and an increase in purchasing power of the currency, which is the opposite of inflation. As I mentioned earlier on, the general consensus is that small amounts of inflation is actually good for the economy. And going with that line of thinking, deflation is not very good for the economy. Because with deflation, prices of goods and services tend to become cheaper over time. So the thinking is that with deflation in the economy, people might postpone their spending on goods and services to a later date, which is not good for consumer economy. But I don't agree with that. Take a look at the iPhone for example. Prices of the iPhone have remained relatively stable throughout the years. But during this period, with roughly the same amount of money, we are able to buy iPhones with better technology over the years. That's deflation in one aspect. But do many people postpone their purchase of iPhones just because they believe that there will be this deflationary aspect? Unlikely, right? Okay, now that we have taken a look at the definitions for inflation and deflation, we'll take a look at what causes inflation and what causes deflation. Now we'll take a look at some of the main inflationary forces and some of the main deflationary forces. For inflationary forces, we have demand pull inflation, cost push inflation, and monetary inflation. And for deflationary forces, we have productivity, and innovation. I might miss out on some of them, but these are the main inflationary and deflationary forces. Now let's take a closer look at these forces. For demand pool inflation, inflation happens when the demand for goods and services rises faster than the economy's productive capacity, meaning that there's more demand for goods and services than what the economy can produce at that time. One example of a demand pool inflation happening is when there's an increase in government spending. Because when there's an increase in government spending, there's an increase in demand for goods and services. So the rise in demand for these goods and services rises faster than what the economy can produce. And that causes inflation, specifically demand pool inflation. The next one is cost push inflation. Cost push inflation happens when prices of production inputs increase. Some factors which contribute to cost push inflation are wage increase, rising raw material prices. And right now as I'm filming this video in late May 2021, commodity prices are at high levels. So some of the inflation that we are seeing right now is attributed to the rising raw material or commodity prices. And we say that this type of inflation is cost push inflation. The next one is monetary inflation. This kind of inflation is caused by the increase in money supply. And the supply of money increases when central banks print money. Because of the pandemic last year, many central banks around the world have printed a lot of money to finance both their fiscal and monetary policies. So some of the inflation that we are seeing right now is due to the monetary inflation. So those are the three main inflationary forces in an economy. Now let's take a look at the deflationary forces. The first one is productivity deflation. With an increase in productivity, we can produce more goods and services with less. And as such, we are able to lower prices. As workers around the world get more productive, they are able to produce more with less. And thus, with all else remaining equal, it will lead to lower prices. The next is innovation deflation. This type of deflation is associated with technological improvements. With technological improvements, firms and workers are able to operate more efficiently, which will also lead to lower prices. We have taken a look at the main inflationary and deflationary forces. So how do we determine whether there's inflation or deflation in our economy? We have to compare the inflationary forces in an economy versus the deflationary forces in the economy. If inflationary forces are stronger than deflationary forces, then we'll see inflation in our economy. So at the start of the video, I mentioned that there are people on one side of the camp who believe that inflation is likely to be at the high end of the range moving forward. So the people in this camp believe that moving forward, 
the inflationary forces in the economy is going to be very much stronger than the deflationary forces. And that is why they believe that inflation is likely to be at the high end of the range moving forward. For the other group of people in the other camp, they do believe that there will be inflation in our economy moving forward. But what is different is that even though they believe that inflationary forces are likely to be stronger than the deflationary forces in the economy, these inflationary forces are unlikely to be much stronger than the deflationary forces. And that is why they believe that inflation is likely to be at the lower end of the range moving forward. That's inflation and deflation explained in a nutshell. Hopefully after watching this video, you will have a better understanding of inflation versus deflation and also have a better understanding of why some people believe that inflation is likely to be high in the future versus why inflation is likely to be low in the future. If you have learned something from this video, smash that like button because it will really help the channel grow and allow me to produce more content such as this. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already subscribed because each week I release new videos about investing, trading and the stock market. I'll see you in those other videos. To your financial success.